Hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of The Mondo Show. Thank you for tuning in today. You don't want to miss today's program. Today, we're going to be talking about unmasking the spirit of the age. My special guest today has written a brand new book entitled Unmasking the Chaldean Spirit. You ever heard the word Chaldean? Well, stay tuned because we're going to be discussing what this spirit is all about. I believe we are living in one of the most prophetic times in our lifetime. Why? There are things that don't make sense in today's society, yet the culture is screaming that the king is coming back. I know you may not want to believe it, but when you take a look around and you turn your TV on or you get on social media, the Chaldean spirit is all over the place. Even from our own pulpits, we watch this spirit being uh, move around in the words they're speaking, the books that they're writing. We have to recognize what spirit is in today's culture. It's destroying our families. It's destroying the culture. It's confusing society itself. And we as the body of Christ, we as the church, must recognize what we are up against. My special guest today is none other than Rabbi Zev Porat. He's here all the way from Israel. He's a formerly Orthodox Jew that has an amazing story to tell. And I'm going to ask him what price did he have to pay in order to follow Jesus Christ. For us here in America, we don't think much of it. But in other nations, they have to give up a lot. And his story is going to stun you on how he gave up millions of dollars sitting on the table all to follow Jesus Christ. Rabbi Sev Parat is a Messianic rabbi all the way from Israel, has written a brand new book entitled Unmasking the Chaldean Spirit. Zev Parat has a message for you, has a message for the church, has an astonishing writings of discovery of some of the most prolific sites in Israel, and you're going to be shocked at some of the information that he's going to give you today. Zev Parat, Rabbi Zev Parat, welcome to the Orange Couch. You're very dignified. <laughs> Mondo, it's an honor to be here. And you are a friend, and I, I always get excited when I get messages from you and we can pray for each other. Absolutely. I, you know, I, I love you. Can I say that? Because you're a genuine man of God. And when I say that, I love people that know the scripture. I'm just a student of the word. I'm a next gang member that fell in love with Jesus. And I began to read the book from Genesis all the way to Revelation. And I found this, the message to be consistent. Yet God reveals to you something different that most people are afraid to deal with. And we're going to get into that because you have a brand new book that is going to shake America's pulpit, unmasking the Chaldean? Chaldean. Ooh, I said that all right, huh? Yeah. <laughs> the Chaldean spirit. And I want to tell you something. If we don't deal with this spirit today, and if you don't identify it, we may be in trouble already. I want to start from the beginning because your story to me is one of the most shocking yet Whenever you pay a price to get something or to gain something, it means more than just saying, oh, I got a gift. Let's have fun with it. But yet most people don't realize that when you follow Jesus in our culture, the Hispanic culture, the Latino culture, the Israeli culture, you're really renouncing your culture, not just a couple of friends here and there. What happened to you when you found if I can say this right, Yeshua. Yeshua, Jesus. Persecution, all hell broke loose. The Chaldean spirit was, I didn't know it was a Chaldean spirit then, but now I know, was after me. And uh, one of the ways he was after me was, was through finances. My grandfather was a Sanhedrin rabbi. He passed away. He left the big estate. And um, I find myself in the attorney's office. And the attorney asked me to... Just sign here that Jesus, Yeshua, is not the Messiah. And then you're going to get $40 million in assets and over $1.5 million in cash. And I looked at the attorney and I said, I will never deny the name of Yeshua. Mm -hmm. And he looked at me and he said, look, I'm, I'm an attorney. I really don't care what you believe. Sign the document here. Go believe whatever you want. Take the money. Nobody's going to hear about it. Nobody's here. And I looked at him and I said, you're wrong. 
the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is here and he sees everything. And I just, I just left. He said, well, you know what's going to happen with the money? They're going to give it to your family. I said, that's okay. But remember to tell my family that Yeshua gave them the money. Ooh. And I just, I just left that room. And I believe, Mondo, that if I would, would have taken that money, I would not be here speaking to you today. Do you really believe that? I believe God would have taken me out. Because the Bible's clear. You know, if you're not, not obedient to his word, he could, he could take you out. We see this in the Bible with Aaron's sons. They offered unauthorized fire, and what happened to them? God took them out right there. I yeah. believe there's people that are watching right now that find themselves in that very moment, just like you did, gambling for their spiritual life. Money, money, money is evil, right? The love of money. The love, the of, love money. of money. Money's not evil. No, the love, the of, money love is- of money. Yeah. Yet in our culture, we worship the love of money today. Speaks a lot for itself. What led you to say, you know what? I don't want the money. The money is not that important. Yet here you were. Were you battling inside? I, I mean, I do want it, God. I'll sow it to the church, God. When, Did that ever cross your mind? When this happened, I was already three and a half months on the beach because of my faith in Jesus and Yeshua. And so I'm, I'm, I'm handed this situation. I went to the lawyer thinking that God is going to get me out of the beach. This is, <laughs> this is the way out. And then I find out that I, I need to sign. It's another Ooh. test. I didn't know how long I'm going to stay on the beach. And so did I, the minute I accepted Yeshua from my background of being an Orthodox Jew, if I, when I accepted him, I knew there was going to be persecution I, because I, I went through 26 months of severe persecution. 26, 26 months. months of severe persecution. I'm still being persecuted today from family, from my sister, from, from other people. All right, let, and, hold and, that and thought so, because I, I want to get there. You today are a rabbi, Messianic rabbi. You're an author. You speak all over the world. You have a ministry that is reaching beyond or comprehension. Biblically, you're probably one of the most rare teachers, scholars, and, 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 and researchers of, of Scripture today, yet you're paying a price that most people probably are not willing to pay to say, Lord, I follow you. What do you do with your own family? How do you deal with the persecution of your sister, your family members, all because you said, I follow Jesus? Simple words. Yet the price is higher. You do what Jesus said. You continue to love them. You can even if they disown you, even if they slander you, even if they say you're dead, and my sister does say that I'm dead, that I died. In a way she's right, Mondo, because I did die and I'm born again. So there's a little bit of truth to that. But uh you, you just you just continue your testimony and, and know that persecution is gonna come. Every believer is gonna have to endure persecution. If you're not being persecuted, you're probably not doing something right. What type of person were you before you came to Joshua? I was an Orthodox. Well, I grew up in a family of Orthodox Jews, a family of rabbis, a family of Sanhedrin. My grandfather was a rabbi. My great-grandfather was a rabbi. My father was a rabbi. I graduated from Sanhedrin school in Israel and became an authorized Sanhedrin rabbi. I praise Yeshua. I never, ex- never used that certificate because I found Yeshua. And after I found Yeshua and I was born again, I was on fire. I was willing to pay any price because I finally saw the truth. I finally saw that all the religion, everything I learned in yeshiva, everything I learned in, in day school, everything that I was taught by my father, that I, didn't, I never really felt the presence of God. Now I finally feel the presence of God, and I was willing to pay any price just to follow Yeshua, Jesus. I asked you that question because here you have an educated man, educated mind. You're not like me. <laughs> grew up in the streets of East LA, California, roaming the streets. And no, no, here you are, an educated man, a man with a background that is sophisticated in, in topics of religion, the Bible, society, culture. Yet when people think of Christians today, followers of Christ, they make us feel like we're dumb. But yet here you have an educated mind in yourself that fell in love with Yeshua, a man that believed the word of God to the point that you risked $40 million. You risked your family's reputation. You risked, I I think, 
Have you risked your whole life physically? I've risked threats? my life physical. I've got physical threats. I have to park my car at home uh, four blocks away. I don't just drive home. I have to drive, take a different route, park four blocks away, walk to my house because I'm always being followed or I could be followed by the anti-missionary organization, Yad Lachim, because a few years back, they busted my car up. They wrote Messianic Pig on the window. And so that's the kind of persecution we go through wow. in Israel. I called them up and I said, well, praise Yeshua, you called me a Messianic pig. At least you recognize I'm Jewish. <laughs> Listen, you have no excuse today. Here in America, we have watered down the gospel. Here in America, we have watered down what it means to follow Christ. Here in America, we've watered down what persecution is for us. Sometimes we, we almost cry wolf because we... Oh, we're getting persecuted on Twitter or, you know, they're, they're, oh, they canceled me on YouTube. Yet, that's not life-threatening. I don't see it as a life-threatening. Maybe it is for some people, but for you, it's a whole different level. And you know, Mondo, I couldn't do it without, uh, without the power of the Holy Spirit. I've been slapped on. I've been beaten. I've been spit on. I went through. I still do it. I, I mean, I've been... I, Two months ago, I got slapped in Israel by an Orthodox Jew. He just slapped me and, and, and went away, you know. And, I mean, uh, nobody's ever pulled a knife on me yet, but, you know, you never know what's going to happen. Can I but, ask you but this? But I would, I, would, I would lay down my life for the gospel, if that's the question. Can I if ask came you to this? That. You are an example of meekfulness. You're an example of Galatians 5. You should know them by their fruits, the fruit of the Spirit. What does it take for us to get through or go through persecution without losing ourselves? Just be grounded in the Word. Pray. Know that He's got everything in control, even if it doesn't look like it. Know that He's always there for you, and that He's not going to let you pass something you can't pass. Maybe what you can go through is not what I can go through. Maybe what I can go through is not what somebody watching can go through. But the Bible is clear. God will never give you more than you can handle. And if God has given you a situation that's difficult, it means you can handle it through, through Yeshua. You just have to get up and say, I can handle it. God gave it to me. I can handle it. You know, when I think about what you just said, I think about the book Unmasking the Chaldean Spirit. Because in order for us to unmask it, there's layers. Let's talk about this for a second. Your book Unmasking the Chaldean Spirit is a message that is going to shake Americans' pulpit because you're challenging the religious form. You're challenging the everyday of teachings that Bible school has imprinted in our hearts, in our mind. You said something on the Jim Baker show. I don't know if we were rolling on the Jim Baker show or, or it was between shows. What did that pastor say to you regarding, I know it's truth, I don't know if I can change that. And I sat with a pastor and showed him the birthplace of, of Yeshua, of Jesus, and he looked at the scripture and he said, you know, Zev, I see what it says here, but I've been a pastor for 22 years. What do you want me to do, change my message? And so this is what we're running into. That's called a watered-down message. That's called, you know, it's different if you, like I, I used to think that the birthplace of Jesus, of Yeshua, is somewhere else. When I found out the truth, I changed what I believed. Because, you know, it's all a, a learning process. But to say that, you know, I'm not, I, I see the truth, but I'm not going to change it because I want to be politically correct or because I don't want to lose my people, that's wrong. And that's what we're running into today. That's the Chaldean spirit. How do we unmask it, Rabbi? How do we unmask this spirit of the age that we're in right now? By doing what you're doing right now, by preaching the truth online, by sharing the truth, by exposing the truth. The Bible says in Ephesians 5.11, that we are to expose the false, the false doctrine, not to have anything to do with it. That's what unmasking the Chaldean spirit does. You have to be grounded in the word, pray, seek, to, seek first the kingdom of heaven, know that everything points to Yeshua, Jesus. It's not about us. It's all about him. And then he'll reveal it to you. What is the Chaldean spirit? For those that don't understand it, for those that are watching right now, you're probably asking, I don't even know what you guys are talking about. What is the Chaldean spirit? Well, first of all, the Chaldean spirit is, we know about Babylon. Yeah. We know the book of Revelation speaks about mystery Babylon, what God is coming against in an hour. 
It says Mystery Babylon. Well, that's the Chaldean spirit. It's just another name for Chaldean, but the Chaldean spirit is the one that is roaring through the earth to possess areas that don't belong to him. We find this in the book of Habakkuk, chapter 5, verses 1 and 6, where it says God will raise up the Chaldeans to march through the breadth of the earth to possess areas that don't belong to him. What's areas that don't belong to him? That's the pulpits, that's America, that's gender, that's marriages, that's Israel, that's the true sites. It's everything. He's here to destroy and destruct whatever he can because he knows his time is near, Revelation 12, 12, where it says the devil knows his time is short, so Mm. he's filled with fury. That's what it's all about. And so this Chaldean spirit is, I believe, based on Scripture, is the head of the Babel, of, of, of Satan's army. Satan has an army of demons. The head of that demon is the Chaldean spirit. What's spoken about in the book of Revelation, Mystery Babylon, which is also Chaldea. Mm. I, I want to look back at Adam. When God gave Adam dominion over the earth, that dominion today is at war with the enemy because when I stop and look at the spirit of what you're talking about, that's the, 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 when God gave Adam dominion over earth, rule over the earth, to be able to inhabit the earth, is the Chaldean spirit wanting to have dominance over the earth versus God's dominion over the earth? Well, the Bible says by one Adam we fell, by one Adam we're redeemed, which is Yeshua. So the battle is to possess everything, to corrupt everything that God gave Adam, entrusted Adam with, entrusted us with, and that's the corruption of DNA, that's the corruption of animals, that's the corruption of gender, Mm. that's everything. Everything that was given uh, to us, to Adam, because Adam just in Hebrew means a human being, Adam, Adam, the word Adam, which is human being. And so he gave it to the human beings, entrusted with them, but it got corrupted. And so this is what the Chaldean spirit is doing. Think about, about uh, the Tower of Babel. What happened in the Tower of Babel? Everything got scattered. Mm-hmm. That Chaldean spirit roaring through the earth. He's possessing areas that don't belong to him, including the biblical sites of Jesus, including everything. And it's going to get worse as we get closer to the second coming of Jesus. What is the one, number one mess that you want people to get out of this book? Because I want you to take the next five minutes and minister to the world. We're broadcasting to every city in America through the Voice of the Prophets Network, the PTL Network. What will your message be? Give me five minutes of what this message of unmasking the Chaldean spirit is. How to identify it? How do we defeat it? And as a church, as a as a uh, the intimate relate, I believe that the intimate relationship that you create with Christ can be one of the key elements to defeating, identifying, and unmasking this spirit. But I want you to take the next five minutes and just minister to the world and tell me what is the message you want us to get out of the unmasking the Chaldean spirit. Salvation came to you and I as a gift by grace, but it came at a heavy, heavy price. And the blood of Yeshua, the blood of Jesus, cannot be taken for granted. If we allow this Chaldean spirit to continue to penetrate our families, to penetrate our pulpits, to penetrate the true gospel, and Paul warns there is such thing as a true gospel. He says, if anybody preaches a gospel other than the one I preach to you, let him be under God's curse. So there is a watered down gospel, and there is a warning about that in the Bible. And so if we see the truth, and we seek the truth, and we say, okay, we can't, we're not going to do that because it's too controversial. We're not going to change the way we teach. We're going to uh, we're not going to talk against abortion. We're, gonna, we're afraid to lose the, you know, the numbers of the people. Then we're preaching a different gospel. And the Bible is clear on that. And so the message is the book, what it does is it reveals Satan's plan, which is to destroy everything so that we can identify this, this, this spirit of unmasking, the spirit of Chaldean. And so a lot of people may be uh, watching this program right now and saying, okay, I, I live in America or I live in England or somewhere. I'm not going to go to Israel. It doesn't matter for me where the biblical sites are. Well, first of all, if you're born again, you're going to Israel. You're going to the New Jerusalem. Second of all, if you want to understand where the New Jerusalem is and how to get there, as the Bible says, this calls for patience and endurance on the part of people of God who hold firm to the testimony of Jesus and keep his word. And I'm paraphrasing. 
how do you keep his word and how do you, for, uh, you can't if you're under the Chaldean spirit. And so if you're never going to go to Israel physically, you still need to know where the sites are because the sites reveal the feast of the Lord. They connect the feast of the Lord. They're not the feast of Israel. They're not the feast of the rabbis. They belong to the Lord. They belong to you. They belong to me. And so if, if you want to tie the dots between Genesis to Revelation, then you need to know everything about Israel because the Bible speaks to Israel. The gospel came from Israel. It's going back to Israel. The Bible says that Israel has been blinded in part until what? Until the fullness of the Gentiles comes in and then all Israel shall be saved. Who's all Israel? Spiritual Israel. That's you and I, Mondo. That's a true remnant. Mm -hmm. And so that's the importance of understanding where the true locations are, where Golgotha is, where our Savior was born, where he was crucified, where he's returning to, and who he's returning with. Mm -hmm. And so the, the book deals with all that. Uh, one thing I want to bring out is the information in this book is not something new. Scholars have seen this. It's all referenced by scholars. Uh, there was uh, scholars from the 1800s already that have seen this. It's just been covered, unmasked by this Chaldean spirit because he doesn't want the believers to know the truth. So they won't be ready. So they won't be prepared. How long did it take you to research this book, the information inside of it? The, just the biblical locations that I found over here based on scripture took me six and a half years of research in Israel. And Mondo, I didn't want to write this book. I really didn't want to because I knew it's going to be so controversial. But God said, now is the time. Book of Daniel speaks, do not roll up, do not seal up this scroll because the mystery of the end time has not yet come. That's what the Hebrew says. And then we read in the book of Revelation, Mystery Babylon. Mm. Part of that revelation is Mystery Babylon being revealed right now. It's time to unmask this Chaldean spirit and for the body to stand firm and to start preaching the truth. Listen, no matter I, what the cost is. I, I want you to go get this book. You need a book that's going to help you with your knowledge. You need a book that's going to help you understand all this historical sites that the Bible talks about, that the Bible leads us into, yet you know, you can't get it all in one tour. You may be going into a tour taking you to places that may not be part of the Bible. You may be yet. walking in the, in the footsteps of demons. Ooh. You may be thinking that you're in Israel, that you're doing, uh, you know, you're coming here to get blessed, but you're actually walking in the footsteps of we demons. We have been sold a bill of goods. We have been sold a lie. But there's always the time for change. Now is the time oh. for change. I've been, I've been given a lie my whole life being an Orthodox Jew, and then Satan coming after me after I become a believer in Yeshua, trying to get me to the fake sites as well. What is your warning to every preacher, every evangelist, every teacher that is held accountable for every word? We talked about this in, 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 in between shows. We carry a lot of responsibility. Every believer carries responsibility, but if you're a preacher of the word, if you're an evangelist, whatever God's positioned you to be, the Bible's clear that you're going to, you know, you're going to have to be a uh, judge for what you teach. True. And so it's very, very dangerous to teach something that's not true. I mean, all of us, I mean, only Jesus knows everything, but there's a certain pattern in the Bible. And if you find the truth and you refuse to teach it, then you're, you're going to have to be accountable to it. Listen, there's I a believe, danger in that. I believe there's, uh, as long as we have breath, we have time. I don't know how long your time is. I don't know how much longer you're going to be able to breathe in this world. I don't know when the end of your road is going to be. Only God knows. But if there was ever a chance to repent, if there was ever a chance to turn away, if there's ever a chance to say, Lord, forgive me. I've been leading people into the wrong tours. If you're a, a person that gives tours in Israel, you may want to read this book and find out you may be leading people into a wrong place. You have to hold yourself accountable today. And, and, and the problem is, Rabbi, is that people don't want to read because they don't want to be accountable for what they read. Because once you read it, now you become accountable with that information. And if we don't do something to change it, we're going to be held in trouble. <laughs> and, you know, that's why the Bible says in Romans 1, 16, 17 to the Jew first, it doesn't mean that the Jew's better. It just means that the Jew received first and therefore mm. he's accountable first. Listen, so it comes under the same thing. I, I can't let you leave without giving a salvation message. We can talk about the book. We can talk about culture and society and the wrong tours. But I believe the greatest message we can give you today is the message of salvation. 
Listen, I don't know. Again, I don't know how long you have to be here in, on earth. And if you're not ready, if your heart's not ready, that's what I'm afraid of. Every morning, every night, every throughout the day, I'm thinking, I got to share the gospel to one more person. And here we have the opportunity to share to millions of people in 30 minutes and 30 seconds to give them a salvation message. Will you honor us and lead us with a message of salvation Salvation for those that are watching if right you're, now? If you're watching this right now, it's not a coincidence. God is calling you today. Maybe you've been a believer in Jesus, but you've backslidden. Maybe you, mm. uh, you just claim to be a believer, but you really haven't called on his name. Today is the day of your salvation. You may be asking, how long do I have? As long as you still have a heartbeat, mm. you still have it. We don't know when our next heartbeat is. Whenever that is, take the opportunity today and call on the name of Jesus as your personal Savior. Maybe you did something that you think God can't forgive you, but the Bible is clear. If you repent and ask for forgiveness and call on his name as your personal Savior, then you are forgiven by his blood. Walk in sanctification, be in the word, and he will, he's just to, to guide you. Maybe you're watching this and you've never heard about Yeshua. You've never heard about Jesus. The fact that you're here today, he's calling you to salvation. He's calling you to repentance. Maybe you're involved in drugs. Maybe you're involved in, in something worse. Yeshua can heal you. Yeshua can restore you. Call on him today. Amen. Mm, Messianic rabbi and founder of Messiah of Israel Ministries. He's an author. He's a speaker. He's a minister. He's a teacher. He's a researcher. Thank you for your time. Thank you. I love man. you, man. I'm going to come see you soon if Pastor Carl Gallops ever takes me to Israel. <laughs> Listen, I have to go. But get the book today, Unmasking the Chaldean Spirit. It is the book that is going to give you and take you into a journey that you are never going to forget. It's going to change your life. It's going to change the way you view the Bible. It's going to change the way you read the Bible. As a matter of fact, go back to Genesis. Take your time reading through the whole Bible. Stop hearing about the Bible. Read the Bible for yourself. No wonder why you're confused. And I, I know you love some of those great preachers and all that, but you got to keep them accountable. And I guarantee you, when you go back to the Word, they're preaching a message that is different than the message that was given from Genesis all the way to Revelation. It's going to change your view. It's going to lead you into the ultimate intimate relationship with Jesus Christ. That's what he wants, is to get to know you personally. It's not about reaching the world. It's about him reaching you into an intimate relationship. I have to go. Remember this. No matter what you're going through, keep the faith. It's going to be all right. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.